Hi, my name is William Spear, and I'm an MEP Technical Specialist with Autodesk. Welcome back to part two of two of the basics of pipe routing in AutoCAD MEP 2010. And in this video, we're going to look at the basics of routing and connecting piping and selecting fittings. Okay, so here we are back in our storm drain piping plan. And this time, we're going to look at three different ways to route and connect piping and how to select fittings. To do that, let's start off by looking at how to connect this roof drain into this pipe over here. And in our last video, we saw an easy way to do that is simply select the item you want to start piping with, pick on the pipe add grip, and start routing piping. But this time, I didn't get that. I didn't get what I was expecting here. And you're going to run into this, which is why I'm showing this to you. What did I get here? This funny line that I'm getting is what's called a plumbing line. In AutoCAD MEP, there are two types of pipes that you can draft in. You can draft in plumbing lines or piping lines in 2D entities or three-dimensional solids. So what I have here is a plumbing line. It's a 2D flat line on a page to depict a plumbing or pipeline. And over here, what we've already created is a piping line. It's a three-dimensional solid. So is this roof drain. So these are piping entities. These are plumbing entities. Now note down here under workspaces, I'm in the correct workspace. I'm in piping, not plumbing. So how did this happen? Well, I'm glad you asked. Let's cancel out of this. Go back to the roof drain, select it again, and this time just hover over the pipe add grip and slow down to read the flyout. Read these flyouts. They will help give you the clues that you need. In this case, we see that this particular piece of content is defaulted to add a plumbing line first, whereas if we just hold the control key down while selecting, we'll get our pipe, or we can hold alt while selecting to add flex pipe. So let's do that. Hold control key down, and lo and behold, I get piping. So we resolved that problem using the flyout as a clue. Now we've run right into the next problem, which is it appears, although I want to drop a riser down, I can't do anything like that. I'm stuck in the XY plane. So we're going to look for our next clue down here in the command line. In the options, we see that we have, among others, two options, compass and plane. The compass is an on-off toggle, visibility toggle for this compass rose that's hovering here at the connection point. And plane command is a way to change the plane that the compass is resting in. So right now it's in the XY plane. If I hit P, enter, notice that this compass rose shifts. Plus, I get the behavior I'm looking for. Now I can drop that riser. Note, too, that the, comp the UCS icon has changed as well, so that what was XZ is now XY again. In other words, whenever you change the compass rose plane, the XY plane will follow it. They stay coplanar. So if I hit P again, you can see how that's changed again. So now I want to drop this riser. I just don't want to go below the height of the branch or else my ladder will have to come back up to meet that branch, but it's fine to stay above it. So let's come down a foot or foot and a half and notice that AutoCADMY P has added my fittings for me, which is nice. I can come over here to my plan view and again, I'm stuck. I can't move. So let's use the plane command. There's my compass rose. And I can finish off by connecting it at a 90 for a T or to 45 with a Y. But which one do I have set? Well, to find that out, on the fly, transparently, so without getting out of the command, we go to properties and we check. So in properties, actually, we're going to check two things. First, we're going to check the slope here. And it's a good thing I did because if I didn't change that, my slope on the lateral connecting to that branch would have been flat, which I don't want. So we'll change that to negative 1 8 and leave it at negative 1 8 because under my piping preferences, I set the slope format option to be inches per 12 inches. Uh, if you change that to a fraction, you can type in 1 over 96. You can change it to percent, in which case I would have typed in 1%. But in this case, it was inches per 12, so I'm going to leave it at 1 8th. And then I'm going to come down here to my branch fittings and check what fitting type I have. Now, it's defaulted to T only now. And you can change that to takeoff only, T only, T or Y, Y only, Y or T. Typically, I'll leave it at T or Y only. T or Y means it'll select T first, then Y. This means it'll select Y first, then T. But again, I just leave it at T only or Y only. So in this case, let's leave it at T only. And I'm going to come back up here now and just come over to the pipe and hover. You can see the, the uh, pipe curve connector up here once in a while, but you don't have to see it. You can just click, and there's the behavior I'm going to get. Now, this is probably what I'd select, but for the purpose of the video, let's see what some of the other five routing solutions are. So we'll hit N for next. You can see a coupling added here. This is where it raised the lateral up. And this would be good if you're going to have to route your piping close to structure initially. Then you go ahead and select this. And when you're done routing it, uh, then you can come back and edit this and just grab this lateral and lift it up with sticky move. It's very easy to do. Just use grips. Here's some of the other options. And in this case, I'm going to undo and I'm going to go back to properties just to show you in this video what would happen if we selected Y only. So then I would come back and instead of coming in at 90, we'll come in at 45. Again, get near the pipe and hit it. 
and this is the behavior we're getting. And to show you some of the routing options, there's next, added a coupling, next, lifted the lateral up. Is this acceptable? Is this good? Yeah, you might say this is good. If we want to stay close to structure, that'd be fine. Looks good here. Looks good in plan as well. But remember in the last video we said open up an extra viewport. And this is why, because in elevation it becomes readily apparent this is not a viable solution because I'd have a backward slope. So this isn't going to work. So these are the different routing solutions here. And in this case, I'm going to undo again and cancel out because I just wanted to show you a few routing options, the way we route pipe. This one we did by selecting the start point and the pipe add grip. You can also just add, select the pipe add command up here. And in so doing, you just come to properties. Make sure that in properties, your system is set, your routing preferences are set, slope, and branch fittings you expect. And the last way to route pipe that I'd like to show you is just to select the pipe itself, and we can go the other direction now. Just hit the pipe add grip here, and we're going to get pipe for sure this time. Because we're starting with a pipe, it won't change it to a plumbing line on us. And let me show you some of the behavior here. Right now, we've got a T fitting. So if I came straight back, that's what I would get for a T fitting here. If I came out at a 90 degree, this is the behavior I'd get. Or if I came to properties and changed this to a Y, I'll show you the behavior you'd get here. There's Y lateral only. Again, if I come straight back, this is what you would get. Or if I come straight out, this is what you would get here. So let's come out just a little ways out. And to finish this up, I can come over to my isometric view, do the pipe add here, and back over to the plan view. And you can literally make the connection there and start playing with some of the routing solutions here. So we'll take next, and that looks like the one I want, and accept that. So you can see that you can route pipe fairly easily with AutoCAD MEP. The last thing I want to show you is how we'd route this riser here, I'm sorry, this vertical horizontal run into this riser over here. So let's do that over here too. We'll take a look at it in a couple of views. So simply pick the pipe, pipe add grip, and notice even though this is above up here, if I wanted to change this to an elbow and just tie, connect into it, I'd use the pecan pipe end connector and accept. There's that. Let's undo. And if I want to go into it itself, I can come down lower and select the P-curve connector. So there's the fitting there. That's not the one I wanted. Let's select a little lower. There's the one I wanted there. And I can go through and cycle these. You can see over here in the isometric how that looks. And if I wanted to, I can accept that and finish off down here simply by picking this fitting, grabbing the grip, and moving this up. And notice I finished that pipe route. So this is how you route pipe and select fittings in AutoCAD MEP. So in summary, when you're routing piping and selecting fittings in AutoCAD MEP 2010, it's always a good practice to have at least two or three viewports open. Double check to make sure what default fittings you've selected. And remember to always check your slope, that it's pitched correct direction and the right value. And the fastest way to get good at this is just simply to get some instruction if you think you need it, and then just practice with AutoCAD MEP until you've become familiar with it and you'll be on your way. This concludes the basics of pipe routing and fittings in AutoCAD MEP 2010, Part 2 of 2. Thanks for joining us.